Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're looking at something a little bit different. This one is a tool called Twine. It's been around since 2009, and it is for creating interactive, non-linear fiction stories. You can basically create text-based adventures. You can also potentially use this to write the uh, story flow for your own game, and export it out with a number of different backends. So you could import it into Godot or Unity. We'll look at a couple of options out there. So you can use this for writing the story side of your game, even if you're not into the interactive fiction side of things at all. But if you want to create uh, browser games of, you know, basically almost choose your own adventure type paths, but have some variable support in them, that is what Twine is all about. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, it is entirely open source. If you want to check it out, it is available at twinery.org. Uh, it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Don't ask me why I set them in the opposite order to what they are. Uh, there are like version splits and there's different backends. It gets very confusing and I'm only going to be doing a very cursory introduction here, but there's an older version of Twine uh, called 1.0 and 2.0. 1.0 is not compatible with 2.0 and vice versa. And there are also different scripting systems available. We'll get into that in just a second. So first off, here you can see Twine. This is the editing uh, program. This is one of the examples I download. I'll you where you can grab some examples yourself. Uh, Twine projects are actually just HTML files. So there's a bunch of stuff embedded in here. But as you can see, I actually opened this one up and you can see, oops, that's the wrong one. That just shows a folder. Um, developer tools here, embedded browser. This is your standard web browser documentation stuff going on here. And here you can see the flow of this story. We start here with the earth and we kind of flow down based off of what you use. <coughs> excuse me, or choose to do. So for example, I come up here, I can start the story from here, or I can go up here and I can change the size of how it displays, where your entry point is or so on. But I'm gonna go in here and edit. Now this is using Harlow format. It's the default built in. Uh, it's a logic system. So you've got some tools up here for doing uh, simple variable calculations and so on for controlling how program flow will go. You don't need to be a programmer to understand any of this. You can sort of see the results right here. It uses a simple markup system. Uh, you can create uh, various different variables that track through the story. So for example, if you wanted to have something like hit points that went down in your story, you could have it so that you took away some hit points if they made a bad choice. And eventually if they die, they go off to the dead section. That is kind of how you control your program flow. Otherwise, it's a pretty standard markup. Uh, this looks like markdown format. You've got your, your formatting of stuff over here. You can embed images. I would love if they actually showed the images in the, uh, the background of the preview, but hey, I'm being uh, kind of specific in my options here. But you see, they've got a number of different paths where you could go. Sun, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Pluto. And you'll notice we have all of those corresponding as branches out of here. You can see the pathing uh, being all defined here. So then you'd head up over here. If you went to Pluto, for example, you're now in Pluto and you can potentially just go back to Earth. Uh, you've got some uh, control here. So you've got uh, a prompted question. Would you like the rice or the hamburger? And you uh, have those prompts go out to the user. I'm going to go back here to the very start. This is the beginning of everything. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play it from the beginning. This is going to open up in a browser. Uh, so you can see here, there is the image we did, the text that you would do, and then a number of different options presented. So here you can see you've got a choice between rice or hamburger. And then, boom, yay, I survived. It's not exactly a super complicated game by any means whatsoever, uh, but it allows you to do these branching narratives but have that variable control behind the scenes. So that is a very quick look at um, uh, the Twine game engine. Uh, the, this, there's obviously more to it. If we go on back over here, you can see... Uh, a lot of the complexity is here in this simplified editor. The other option out there called SugarCube, uh, it actually, I think, I think it directly embeds JavaScript in, but you need to use an external editor. There's actually an extension for Visual Studio Code. So if you want to go that route, you can, but if you want to go the easiest route, you're going to probably want to go with Harlow as your scripting engine. Uh, so that is one example. Again, you got the ability to define variables. You've got the ability to find uh, loops. Uh, you can link out to various different things under various different conditions and so on. So it's really quite a straightforward tool. It is for creating interactive branching stories with an element of logic behind them. And then when you're done and when you're happy to go, you can publish out as an, um, you ultimately publish this out as a, an HTML file that you can deploy or run anywhere. Uh, there have been people out there that have actually bundled them in with, um, you know, a, a, a an HTML deployer type thing and made them into text adventures that they sold on the Google Play Store or on the iPhone. So that is an option here. Or another option, as I mentioned earlier on, is you could take something like this and use it for constructing the branching narrative of your game. 
and then having you know normal graphics and all that going on top so if you're doing something more like a text adventure but but with you know controllable sprites on top of it you could use this for the logic and story side of things all right so back to the thing at hand so this is uh where you can go ahead and download it this is an open source project it is under the gpl v3 license uh it's been in development for a very very long time but uh it was last updated this one january so it does get constant upgrades so the last okay that's weird because the last release was in february Okay, I don't understand it. Uh, so there are pretty constant releases. As you see, there have been 45 over the lifetime of the project. It is a GPL project. That means you're basically keeping the source code open. If you're going to do a derived work, your derived work is also GPL. Your actual published story, though, does not. So you can actually, you don't have to give away your story because it's a GPL. So I guess in details, I'm getting started with it here. But the easiest way, of course, is go to twinery.org and just download the binaries. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, there are two kind of, I guess we'll go with markup languages or, or back ends for this. Uh, the one that is kind of out of the box is called Harlow. I will link the details here in the, um, in the article link down below. So if you want to learn more about it, your one option here is a Harlow. You can see so the code in action, you actually play around with it and tweak with it down here. So you can see how to work with Harlow code. The one real big advantage to Harlow is if you use the out of the box version I just showed you, you get that editor built in. It makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, the other option though is SugarCube. Um, it's another approach. Again, there is no editor directly built in, so you have to use something like Visual Studio. Uh, but Visual Studio does have um, an extension for it, and I do think you have a bit more capability when it comes to the world of SugarCube. Now, if you're trying to figure out SugarCube versus Harlow, uh, if you're just trying to write a story, from what I can understand, you probably just want to use Harlow. Uh, but there was this great breakdown, and it's, it's quite current. Uh, between Harlow and SugarCube, which one you should use, what the strengths and weaknesses of each one are. Uh, if you want to, I will link this out, uh, check it out so you can choose between the two if you so wish. Uh, also, I mentioned earlier on, there are runtimes out there for other game engines. I just looked up and found two, and I'm not sure that these are the best ones or anything else like that, but they are reasonably current and uh, they're out there. I've also seen other things basically say to export out to Yarn and then use Yarn Spinner if you want to use Unity. Uh, so those are two different options. But one of the options we got out here is Cradle, uh, an open source MIT licensed thing for playing uh, Twine Stories in Unity. And then for Godot, there's Twice in Godot, uh, which also a simple script that makes using Twine Stories in Godot a bit easier. So if that's where you want to go, uh, those are two options that are out there. Uh, it's It can also, there's a number of different tools and resources for compiling uh, your story into like JSON format or other formats that can be used. So if you want to extend this into your own proprietary workflow, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, but by no means is it the only option out there. Now also, if you want to just get started with it and you want to check out a story everything is straight out just html uh so for example I, the one i downloaded here uh, 100 ways to die in space i grabbed one just kind of randomly out of this this is the interactive fiction archive of twine games so there's a number of different twine games you can come here so if you want some interactive fiction to play around with there's a bunch here but you can go ahead and download any one of these grab the zip file open it up and then just go into uh, twine itself and you can import in the story uh from the uh actually this from the load screen so let me just load twine back up so when you first launch Twine, you got access to the stories right here. So you can import from file and grab it that way and bring it in. So just do be aware also that there are uh, the different formats. That's a very key thing. Nice thing also, there's a light mode and a dark mode. So you do have the ability to just bring in the uh, HTML file. You can import it there and get started. Or of course, you can create your own. You can also switch between. Uh, so you can also switch edit out style sheets for the entire thing. Uh, and then when you're done, you can publish it out. And then you can deploy that to other people. You can throw it up on your website, whatever you wish to do, whatever your end game is here. So Twine is a long and storied <laughs> uh, open source game development tool for creating narrative interaction, fi interactive fiction. Again, it's not really a world that I get into that much, but I know it's, it's definitely one of interest to some people. So I figured I should cover it here on the channel. Let me know what you think. Also, if you're using something else, are you using something like Yarn or Yarn Spinner or a, a different interactive fiction tool? Uh, let me know what your uh, recommendation is in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.